Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be my review on the Valentino Donna Born in Roma range. And just because I don't wanna keep saying Valentino Donna Born in Roma, just know that that's what all of these are called, except I have seen different names, which I'll go over when I go over the new pink. But I'm gonna be saying like Yellow Dream, Coral Fantasy, The Intense, but just know that this is the Donna Born in Roma range. So let's go ahead and get into the review so i'm gonna go in the order that these fragrances were released so we're gonna go over the original and the original has slightly different packaging i believe they've updated it i do prefer the cap but just so you can see the fragrance doesn't come with a cap it just comes with this kind of clip so donna born in roma the original the eau de parfum this is the pillar this one was released in 2019 and this fragrance is described as woody vanilla fruity soft spicy floral musky green and citrus this fragrance has top notes of black currant pink pepper bergamot middle notes of jasmine jasmine sambac jasmine tea and base notes of bourbon vanilla cashmere and guayac wood and this is considered an amber floral fragrance so when this scent opens up I do right off the bat get the black currant, but it's a little more fresh to my nose, not that intoxicating black currant that I get like in the Giorgio Armani C range. This is more of a fresh black currant, and I do get something that tickles my nose very slightly in the opening, and then I do get kind of that bergamot off in the background. So it opens up that way, and then right away I get the jasmine and the vanilla. And then as this scent dries down, the fruity notes fall a little bit more off into the background. The vanilla starts to get warmer. And then I do get a very slight, 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 slight woodiness. This isn't an overly woody fragrance. To me, this is more of a floral fruity fragrance in the dry down. There is a warmth to it, even though they don't like list amber, but I do get something warm in this fragrance in the dry down. And the jasmine in here is a little bit more clean and it doesn't come off indolic. I don't get a jasmine tea. There's nothing really tea-like in this fragrance. It's just a warm, fruity, kind of vanilla, ambery jasmine fragrance. Very pretty, easygoing. It's sexy, but not too much. I would say more like a tamed sexy. It is a fragrance that it's kind of loud for the first hour, but it's very much intimate in the dry down. It's one that if you get your clothes in your hair, you and like your partner, or if you're out with your girls, you and whoever you're with around you will smell you, but it's not too loud. It's definitely more in your bubble and in your area. It's one that if I flip my hair, I will get wafts of it, but it's a really nice, easygoing kind of fragrance in my collection. I really do enjoy this one. And again, that is Valentino, Donna Born in Roma, the Eau de Parfum, and this is the pillar. The next we have Yellow Dream. And as you can see, this one does have the cap. This one is described as musky, citrus, rose, powdery, aromatic, and floral. This one was released in 2021, and this one is considered a floral fragrance. This one has notes of lemon, rose, and musk. Even though they don't list the bourbon vanilla in this one, I still get the famous base of the original Donna Born in Roma in this one in the dry down. I'm actually getting it right now, but I don't feel like we are getting all of the notes that are in here because again, I, I can tell in the dry down that this is a flanker, but it's a flanker that's different enough. Like it's gonna lean more on a rosy lemon side, more musky, but I still get that Donna Born in Roma DNA with that kind of bourbon vanilla that's in the original so i do feel like they're not giving us all the notes but this one is a nice kind of citrus fresh take on it and the lemon and the rose i feel like sets this fragrance apart when i first got this fragrance it didn't smell like anything i had in my collection this is very much a rosy citrus musky scent and then again in the, in the deep dry down you do get that original dna so again this is yellow dream all right, then next we have Coral Fantasy. And for me, this is the one that departs from the original. This is considered a floral fruity fragrance and it was released in 2022. And this one is described as fruity, musky, citrus, tropical, sweet, floral, fresh, rose, and powdery. And this has top notes of kiwi, Brazilian orange, middle notes of Indian jasmine, and brett, rose and then base notes of white musk and texas cedar so for me even though this one departs from the original i still tie it in because 
there's a rosy muskiness that I get in Yellow Dream that I also get in Coral Fantasy. So whereas this departs from the original, there is something in common with these two. I do get a rosiness in this one and a muskiness and this one is very tropical. Like this one, as soon as I spray it, I get tropical fruit and it gives me slight Dolce & Cabana Limpatrice 3 vibes. Like the fruit in that one, yeah. It's more of a like a fruit bowl salad, more tropical. It's not your other fruity florals with like black currants or pear or like berries. It has more of that kind of kiwi and then there's orange so it's bright and then tropical. It's a little bit more summertime, kind of like Yellow Dream I would say is a little bit, these two are more spring and summer. But this one again for me has more to do with Yellow Dream. It opens up with that burst of tropical fruit Yellow Dream's more citrus, this one's more tropical fruit, but then in the dry down, I get rose and a muskiness. And even though this isn't citrus like lemon, it's still got that orange kind of bright, you know, opening like Yellow Dream. So again, it still ties in with the range, but more so with Yellow Dream than with the original. These two smell completely different. It's more so that kind of, citrusy musky rose so again that is coral fantasy so next we have the intense version so this was released in 2023 and this is considered an amber floral fragrance and this is described as amber vanilla white floral powdery warm spicy and balsamic and this has top notes of bourbon vanilla amber middle notes of jasmine and base notes of benzoin this one does have three types of jasmine just like the original this to me isn't intense well it does perform a little louder than the original but it is it it isn't intense like powerhouse which i'm learning that's not necessarily what intense means to me this took the core of donna born in roma this took the vanilla the jasmine and the amber and it intensified it but it also stripped away the other notes so this is more of a simple kind of ambery jasmine vanilla fragrance but to me very intense so i do feel like this is the more intense version now when this one opens up you get a burst of burst of jasmine but it's more indolic and then it gets more like that clean fresh jasmine in the dry down but in the opening it is more of that kind of realistic jasmine and then as it dries down, you get more vanilla and amber. Cause again, most of these fragrance opens up with all of the notes. So this one does open up very jasmine heavy and then vanilla and ambery. And then as it dries down, the jasmine gets more tamed, becomes more of that clean jasmine. And then the vanilla and the amber get a little stronger. So then it's more of a ambery vanilla jasmine in the, in the dry down. This one I like but I love it more as a layering fragrance. This one takes any other fragrances and makes it more warm, ambery, and vanilla. So this is a really nice fragrance to layer with, especially if you enjoy Yellow Dream and Coral Fantasy for spring and summer. To me, this makes those fragrances more fall, but without making it too heavy or dense where you can only wear it in cooler weather, it's perfect for like Florida fall or just any kind of fall. It just brings a warmth to the fragrance. So again, this is the intense. Then last we have Born in Roma Pink. So the new Flanker is a dazzling fragrance inspired by Valentino's Pink PP Color, a unique shade of pink created by Pierre Paolo Piccoli for the fall winter rendezvous collection. Sorry if I butchered that, I'm just gonna call it pink, but this is another 2023 release and this is considered an amber floral fragrance. This fragrance is described as citrus, vanilla, white floral, sweet, powdery, and soapy. I don't really get a soapiness from this fragrance. No, I get a burst of mandarin. I do get a slight bitterness from the orange blossom and it's a little sweet. There is something slightly clean, almost like there might be a clean jasmine in here, but I honestly, this isn't a jasmine scent. This is very much a fruity orange fragrance. And then you do get the orange blossom, but it's blended really nicely in here because sometimes orange blossom can come off a little sickly sweet. The notes on this one are top notes of Calabrian Mandarin, middle notes of orange blossom, and base notes of bourbon vanilla. So I still get the Donna Born in Roma DNA, but for me, this one departs with that orange blossom 
I still get something slightly clean, not necessarily soapy, but just something clean in this one, almost not musky either, but there's just something slightly clean, but I do get more orange blossoms. So this is one that if the jasmine bothered you or the rose and any of the other fragrances, you might want to check this one out. And this one to me out of the line is a little bit more fun and flirty and easygoing. Even though these are all easygoing fragrances, to me this one's the easiest. So again, that is Valentino Pink. All right, performance. I'm gonna start with pink because out of the range, I feel like this one has a little bit less than moderate performance. This is when I do have to overspray. So it comes in a only 100 ml bottle and I feel like I'm gonna go through this one a little quicker because this one has less than moderate performance. Not four or five hours. I can get this one to last if I get my hair enclosed, but it doesn't project loudly like the first hour or two the way these other ones do. This one I gotta spray a lot and even then, I don't find this one to be super, super loud. So this one isn't poor, it's just below moderate. It's a little bit more intimate, closer, and then it does become more of a skin scent. But if you get your clothes in your hair, you can get this one to last. So I would say out of all of them, this one has, again, not the best performance. I would say the original Yellow Dream and Coral Fantasy have moderate performance. There are fragrances that are going to project for the first hour or two, depending on how you spray it. It's one that leaves a nice little scent trail. It's not one that's beastly. None of these are powerhouse fragrances. But if you spray it enough for that first hour or two, you could leave a scent trail. And it's one that if you're with someone, you're hanging out with your partner or your friends, the people around you are gonna smell you. If you go in for a handshake, a hug, someone might um, smell you because I have been complimented on these fragrances. And then the Intense to me does perform a little bit better. Again, not a powerhouse, but it is one that performs above moderate. Not quite a powerhouse, but not quite moderate. It is a little louder. And while the first three, the original Yellow Dream and Coral Fantasy are like six to seven hours, this is eight plus hours. I always wake up smelling this one and I don't have to put nose to skin. So this one I would say is probably the best performing on my skin out of the range. All right, and then ranking. This is a little hard because these two are so close, but if you told me that I can only keep one, it would be Yellow Dream. And that's just because I'm a Freshies girl at heart on top of being a fruity floral girl, but I don't have many fragrances like Yellow Dream in my collection. I love musky scents, I love rose. So Yellow Dream would be my first, followed by the original. I feel like I could get this somewhere in my collection, so that's why this one made it to second. Third would be Coral Fantasy, because again, I'm a fruity floral girl at heart and I love tropical fruity florals. I don't have too many, even though there's Limpatrice 3, I would probably pick this one over Limpatrice 3 if I had to choose. So in third would be Coral Fantasy. And fourth would be Pink, just because this is an easy grab in my collection and I love your kind of mass appealing fruity floral fragrance. And then in last would be the Intense. Now, even though it's last, I do really enjoy this fragrance. I would say my love for this fragrance is layering. This fragrance layers very nicely with this entire range and adds a warm vanilla feeling, especially this time during fall when I wanna feel warm. My scent of the day is Coral Fantasy with the Intense version. This is a beautiful combination. So even though this is in fourth, I still really enjoy the Intense. So which Donna Born in Roma is right for you? I would say if you want more of your traditional amber floral, leaning on a jasmine side, a little sexy but not doing too much, then go for the original. You want something a little more grown, but still leaning more jasmine, but maybe less fruity, more vanilla ambery, I would say go for the Intense. This one's just a little bit more grown up than I would say the original. You want something more everyday, more fresh, more musky, I would say go for either Yellow Dream or Coral Fantasy. If you want something more lemon rose, this is a true lemon rose musky fragrance, go for Yellow Dream. You want something a little bit more fruity on the tropical side, but still musky and fruity, I would say go for Coral Fantasy. And if you want more of a fruity, leaning more on the orange blossom, not your traditional jasmine, but more of your traditional orange blossom, I would say go for the new pink. This one's a little bit more what's going on right now. I feel like orange blossom 
is what is in a lot of the newer fragrances. This one's more easy. This is more flirty and fun. So that was my review on the Valentino Donna Born in Roma range. Let me know in the comments below. Do you guys have any of these fragrances? Which one is your favorite of the line? But that will do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.